Hey, what's up guys? Shake somebody here, playing the field with Shakes. It's another show. Three names. Tommy Derasmus, Njab Leblanc, and Cassius Malula. We have to talk about them. Let's go. That's how it goes. They keep asking about the best when they know it's me. Okay. Asking about the rest when they know it's me. Straight in, I guess. <laughs> you know it's me. The weekend kicked off with the KZN and Derby. Merch began to going up against Golden Arrows. And what a game that was. Arrows winning 2-0. I mean, again, getting crucial points. You know, even Ryan Moon coming in into the game and as well as showing his arrow prowess. It also almost gives them a different dimension in terms of how to play. Now they can cross balls in. But that just means that it's another loss for Maritzburg United and John Maduka. I mean, this season they've conceded the most. Have a look at that. 19 goals conceded in 11 games. And they've only scored six. It was sad watching this on Friday. I, I mean, when I say sad because of John Maduka and the person that he is, he seems like a very nice guy. But now when you start to see fans leaving the stadium, you know, fans starting to voice their opinion as well, showing boards that he must go as well. It almost like you're watching someone getting beat and you're just wishing that they would stop. And Marisburg United fans have every right to complain because the team has just not been good this season. They have not really have been good. And it's getting to a place where now the Heriguala Stadium is becoming toxic. It's becoming a very toxic place. And I have a really good feeling that I think Farouk is waiting for when the World Cup break begins. But it has begun, right? And I think that we will not see John Maduka on the other side when the league games do come back because there's nothing wrong in saying that the project did not work out. I thought the team would have played better. I thought they would have scored more goals. But you can just see even with the team itself, the confidence is just not there and they're always constantly sitting back. And they come out in the second half because they're far behind and, and they're 2-0 down and they've got nothing else to lose and they go for it. But before it gets to a place of toxicity... I just think a decision has to be made, and I think it might be just best for the club and also for him. The Soweto Derby, the game that KZ Chiefs won, the biggest game in South Africa. Fans packed out, and I was there. You know, I got to tell you, man, watching that goal from Yusuf Mart, I mean, special. You know, you see those goals, you've seen David Beckham do it before, but it was just so far away. It always seemed so far away, and then now you're in the stadium, and you see this lob go over, and as it's going, you just think... The ball is going out. The ball is going out. The ball is going out. And then there, it just dips right at the moment. And that's what it took to break the, break the game into a 1-0 win for, for KZ Chiefs. I've come up with talking points for KZ Chiefs and as well as for Atlanta Pirates. But let's kick things off with the winning team. I thought tactically they were sound. I have to give credit to, to Atazwani because he had me fooled. The way that they started, they started so slow. And I was, look, I know it was Orlando Pirates' home game, but they were playing at FNB Stadium. And I just thought to myself, when is Chiefs going to play here? But it seems like that was actually the plan. <laughs> the plan was to let uh, Orlando Pirates come in and come in. And the further up that they pushed, they left gaps within the back. I mean, the roles that uh, Yusuf Martin as well as Njab Leblom. Njab Leblom, I mean, what a player. But the roles that they played in having to cover up for the fullbacks that were going forward. Every single time the Solomons went forward, you know, you could just see Njab Leblom was covering there. And I think also something else that Kizzi Chiefs did really well was that they stopped the supply from Njonjo. You know, Jose Rivero came out with this attacking lineup. Nabasa was there, Erasmus was there, Saleng was there, Hoto was there. I think that was the most attacking lineup I saw from Orlando Pirates. But the key thing that Atoswani did was just stopping the supply from the runners going out wide. So that was brilliant to see as well. And then, in Jabla Blom, I brought his name up. And a crucial player. I mean, I put a tweet out. And I re-watched this word to Derby when I got back home. And I could not believe how much of an important role he's played. You know, ever since he's come into that position, he's never left. He's never left. You know, he's always, you probably would say he's the first name out of when it puts on that starting lineup. And I have to urge KZ Chiefs, you have to really sort out those contract situation now. Really. I mean, I could imagine what KZ Chiefs fans would go through if he went to a rival club. I think the only thing KZ Chiefs fans, fans would be happy with is if he went overseas. But if he goes to a rival club at the age that he's at with the engine inside his chest, 
I mean, get the Chiefs gift the guy what he wants, man. I mean, I think he's deserved it. He's a Bafana Bafana player as well. So I think Kansas Chiefs need to act real quickly. Another player, Ashley Dupreer, player who gets into great positions, could have had a brace in the first half. Could have had a brace. You know, that's the thing about Ashley Dupreer. His pace is so frightening that he's always going to beat defenders, especially when they're pushing high up. The only thing with Ashley Dupreer that I would say is he really needs to work on his finishing, and I've said it before. I've said it before that he needs to work on his finishing because the one thing I do fear is the fans eventually get on his back. And you can only imagine if it wasn't for Yusuf Mart's goal, I mean, that game could have ended nil-nil. Joseph Rivero said it. And I actually believed him. It, it took a brilliant goal to have a winner within that game. And he had two big chances. Two big chances. And you look back at, remember Kinson and Kata? Kingston, when he was at Chiefs, he was a workaholic as well, but then he was not scoring the goals, and eventually the fans got onto his back. So I think Ashley Dupree is a very good player, and I'm going to definitely give him more time, but now you've got the break. You've got the break now. The World Cup is going on. Let's not watch too much World Cup. Let's do some finishing, and maybe he might just come back deadlier. The next point, Ngosin Pilengovo. I mean, it was great to see him back. I thought he played that number 10 position really well, feeding the balls to Ashley Dupreer. And as well as he just left the two, you know, Yusuf Mart and Jablo Blom to do all the work. But eventually when he came in, he was sort of marshalling the game, dictating the tempo as well for Kaiser Chiefs. And it was great for him to come back into the side and perform in the way that he did. And, and I also tweeted as well, responding to one of the fans because they asked me in terms of what did I think of his performance, you know, and they were asking for more consistency. I've actually been very cautious with him. I mean, if, if, if you've had a look in the past couple of shows, I've not mentioned him because he's over. I've not mentioned him because he lost his father, man. He lost his father in September. That's not far back. And I know how much that can hit a player as well, considering the fact that how much I love my father as well. So I've been very considered with regards to his position within the team. But now he's got a performance, he's got a good performance, he's got a break, and I'm sure he's going to come back stronger. And the last point, Kama Biliard. Hmm. 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 Now, I don't know if you guys can remember, I put a tweet out and I asked the question, is Keegan Dolly and Kama Billiard losing their superpowers? Keegan Dolly has scored some really crucial goals, some good set pieces. I think he's contributing. I still want more from him. I do still want more. Then we move on to Kama Billiard. He's probably playing in a position that he doesn't like. He's playing up front. He's on his own. You know, he hasn't had the chance to play with Caleb on many occasions, and maybe the best we see out of Kamabilet is when he's playing with a target man. We saw that when Castro was at Sundowns, you know, and that CBD that they had. But the one thing that I'm starting to see, and it's becoming frequent for quite some time, and I'm stretching this back to even last season as well, Kamabilet is somehow becoming less effective in games. Less effective. You know, the Kamabilet of old was able to beat defenders, just run past them. And the thing is, is that even though he's not playing in the position that he would like, my only thing is that he's aging. He's getting slower. He's not creating enough chances either. So I never knew I'd have to come to a situation where I say this, but I, I seriously am of the belief that I think Casey Chiefs might have to make a decision at the end of the season. You know, do they carry on? Because he's reaching 33. You know, do you carry on further? especially considering the fact that you can see the stats are diminishing as well. So it's going to be a big decision, but others one in your troops. Take a bow. Let's move to the black and white Orlando Pirates talking points now. Come up with your guys' talking points too. Number one, did not make the most of their dominant spell. You know, in the first half, the first 30 minutes, I mean, this team was all over KZ Chiefs. I thought they were always within their half, and I just thought the final decision from these players could have been a lot better because they did not test Peterson. They really didn't. They didn't test Peterson. And with that, you guys allowed KZ Chiefs to go in confidence within the game. I mean, of course, look, Atazone had his game plan, but there was a period where the ball just never left the halfway line. You know, and that was the period you guys could have tested. You guys could have taken more shots. More shots on target as well. Number two, Njondlu. I spoke about the fact that Casey Chiefs were covering him up. And what Arthur Zwan explained in the, in the press conference made a lot of sense. 
made a lot of sense because Miguel Tim was not there. And I got to tell you, Miguel Tim and Mosella, two different players. Two different players. Miguel Tim has the ability to make a creative player dance because he does all the hard work. But as for Mosella, on the other hand, I mean, he also wants to get forward too. And he leaves that responsibility. Now you're making Ndongjo also get back. Ndongjo's not that type of player. So when I saw all of that, I just thought it just played into Kizichu's hand from the middle of the park. But I've seen Jose Rivero using Ndongjo in a front three and as well as a middle two. And I still think he's trying to figure out what's his best position and how to use him. And everybody knows Ndongjo is a player who can create chances. He's a player who can beat defenders as well. So... It's very interesting. Does he need to put him in a three and then Mochare comes in or maybe have Mosella there? Because also a nice interesting thing that happened for Orlando Pato was Miguel Tim was not there. So now you've got the case study of how to play when Miguel Tim is not there. And I don't think it's a middle two of Mosella and as well as Ndrondo. So I would say that was point number two. Number three, the star player, Saleng. I mean, Saleng, I showed you his stats last, last week. You know, been scoring goals. He's been making players fall over the place. We've seen all of that. But what I saw with Orlando Pirates as well, and maybe something that Joseph Rivera might need to change, is they were becoming predictable. I mean, they were always looking for him, you know? I don't think too many balls went to, to the other side, to Hoto. Yes, he got some balls and maybe he messed them up, but I just thought it was always so predictable. They were always looking towards the right-hand side. Where is he? Is he open? And that just made Chiefs very easy to, for them to sort of master a, a tactic that they can play against Orlando Pirates. And the next one, number four, Kermit Erasmus. I thought he didn't touch the ball enough. I really don't think he touched the ball enough. I was expecting him to, to be used a lot more, especially considering the fact that he's come in, he's showed that he's able to create goals and he's able to score goals. He's able to hit shots as well. So I think that is something that Joseph Rivera would look back at that game and say, that's the problem, that this star strike of ours did not touch the ball enough. And the last but not least, I spoke about this in the video that I posted over the weekend right after the game. Every single moment that Orlando Pirates has, they make you feel like they're about to do something special. They're about to challenge. They're about to, I don't know, <laughs> they're about to get closer to Mamelodi Sundowns. And then they have performances like they did against Keita Chiefs. I mean, how do you beat a side like Mamelodi Sundowns and play like that? And we've seen it before. Maritzburg United, they're in poor form, but guess which team they've beat? Orlando Pirates, you know? And I tell you, man, I see a lot of people talking in the tweets, and there was also an Orlando Pirates official that tweeted to also say that there is a final this weekend that Keita Chiefs is not in. But with that kind of inconsistency, I don't know if you should be going a third game with a lot of confidence. So that's the only thing about Orlando Pirates is that I looked at also the stats. 16 games played in all competitions. Only seven wins, guys. Seven. Seven. You would have thought this Orlando Pirates side that we're talking about a lot has won more than that. But they haven't. And that is something that Jose needs to fix real quickly because that kind of inconsistency can also push Amazulu to get the MTNA trophy. Another win for Mamlodi Sundowns since... Rolani was made the head coach. I have to tell you, man, they didn't start so well. You know, Mamelodi Sundowns didn't start so well. I thought Royal AM could have scored a couple of goals. And they'll be kicking themselves. And it also showed you that when you play against the Mamelodi Sundown side, when you get those chances, you have to put them away. You have to seriously put them away. You know, and the one thing about this game, the first goal that Mamelodi Sundown scored, because they scored three. But the first one that they scored in the first half was their first chance. Their first chance. So if you don't put them down, man, this team is going to come back. And eventually, Mamlu Sanos took control of the game. It worked into their favor. Royal M had to push up and sort of try to get a goal. But Mamlu Sanos, with the, with, the, with the firepower that they have, the pace that they have, I don't think Royal M could cope. And that takes it to two games and eight goals scored since Royal was made head coach. But we've got to talk about a special player. I mean, there's a special player there at Mamelodi Sundowns, guys. Keishas Mailula. Hey! This guy is nippy, eh? He's nippy. He moves around. I don't know if he's even a striker. You know, I watch him and I'm like, he's not a striker, is he? But he's playing up front. He's playing up front. But he, he reminds me of, you know, that false nine Spain used to play. 
when Cesc Fabregas was up front, he's like that. You know, he's playing in that false nine position and he's hard to defend because he's moving around. And something that is very interesting is that he actually, it, it makes Mamelou Sanos look, look different because when Charlie lives in the side, it's so obvious. He's the target man. You know, he's the target man. They're always looking for him for runs. For him, it's like he can drop deep. You know, he can drop deep. He doesn't have to be the one up front. Sometimes he runs in late and he scores goals. He's everywhere. That's why I said he's hard to, to, to defend as well. And I have to say, look at this. I mean, this is the form of a 21-year-old, guys. I mean, unbelievable. Seven games, six goals. And he creates too. You know, he creates goals. He, he loves a pass. And I just think that with him coming in and with him having this form, maybe, just maybe... Mamelu Di doesn't need to spend anymore in the win in the window when it's coming in January, but also with this break for the World Cup, it sort of gives Charlila time to recover. I expect him to be back next year, but he he just offers something different, and maybe he might just save Mamelu Di some cash. But I still do feel maybe a different type of striker could help them out. But he's definitely definitely been a very very good stopgap, and I would hope that Mamelu Di protect him. Romain Falls got his first win in South African football. Amazulu going up against Stellenbosch and them winning 1-0. A crucial victory. I mean, this man had so many draws, man. I mean, so many draws. You sort of figured, is he ever going to get a win? You know, but he's there, got his win, and he got Amazulu to the final as well. And I got to tell you, it comes at the right time. Just at the right time. Because you know why? The MTN8 final is this weekend against Orlando Pirates. So it gives them belief. It's going to definitely give them belief in the, in the sense that they can score goals and as well as it wasn't a draw too. When is the final? There you have it on your screen. Saturday, 6 p.m. Where else than Moses Mabida? And it's sold out already. It's sold out. And i got to give a shout out to the fans too. I think they have they've come out in numbers. They've really showed up this season and big ups to you guys. But it's a final that I can't wait to see. And one team comes with a win and the other team is going to be wounded of that Soweto Derby loss. The final game that took place over this weekend at the STV Premiership was Super Sport United going up against Swallows. Game ending 1-1. But Super Sport were in charge. They started really well. You know, they missed chances. But one thing I liked about them and what I saw is that they forced the goal. The first goal that was scored in the game. Satwaya so getting in on those goals. You know, the header from him. Typical, typical Satwaya. And I'm really happy for him and the fact that he's come in. And I've never been in doubt of him, despite the fact that he was under part of Orlando Pirates. But it reminded me of what Vitz was like and the old super sport with Gavin Hines. Just being able to just force wins and also being able to show another aspect of scoring because they don't just score beautiful goals with Bradley Crobland as well as uh, Gabuza, but they can score two set pieces too. But the problem came in after they scored. You know, after they scored, I don't know if whether the team became complacent. They sat back. They invited pressure. And Swallows, man, credit to them. They saw the gap and they kept going. And I think the changes from Musa Nyatama was also key as well. Mjali came in, scores a brilliant goal. Brilliant goal. I, I thought even um, Ricardo Goss could have done slightly better on that goal, but it was a very good goal. Kevin Hunt will definitely be disappointed, considering the fact that his team took the lead. He wasn't far away from Mamelo de Sanons, but now with this draw, you fall further behind because Sanons won, definitely. But I have to jump to Swallows too. You know, and I think Musa's come in since uh, Dylan Kerr parted ways. He's been made interim coach. And I think he steadied the ship quite well. He steadied the ship quite well. I don't think the results have been that great, but I think he steadied the ship a little bit much better than what it was before. But I will say this. I still do feel that a coach with more experience needs to come in. I think if he becomes permanent all the way to the end of the season, I think it's a little bit unfair to have a young coach like that take the responsibility of potentially driving Swallows out of a relegation position or a relegation fight. And also consider the transfer ban that they're under as well. We don't know how, where that is and if it's going to be sorted out. I seriously believe it's just unfair to put it all on him to keep going. Even though he steadied the ship, I just don't think we can do that, to put that all on him to sort of take them out. So the only thing is I would say for Swallows in my my message to the chairman as well is get someone with more experience, man, and get him to sit next to him. 
You know, he doesn't have to go away. He can be the assistant, which is fine. But someone with more experience who knows the league, because I can just see in the second half of the season, it's going to be a bit of a rock and roll. I mean, they're going to have to fight. They're really going to have to fight. So my message to David Mahashwa, who I have huge respect for, please bring in more experience. It's time for our weekly bet of the week. The purpose of this segment is to show you my bet slip in hopes that it helps yours light and green. The more accurate, the more cash you get. Let's get into it. It's the final round of the UEFA Champions League games within the group stages, and there's still so much to play for. I've gone with four games, and I've gone straight wins. Match result. Match result. You know why I've gone with so much confidence? Look at my bet last week in the UEFA Champions League. Looks good, right? <laughs> I can't believe I got that right. <laughs> okay, first game. Real Madrid going up against Celtic. Real Madrid straight win. They need to top the group, so they need to win. Chelsea against Zagreb. I've gone with Chelsea. I just think they'll be wounded off what Brighton did to them. And then Maccabi going up against Benfica. Benfica could top the group over PSG. And Maccabi, obviously, they've been the whipping boys within that group. So I've gone with the Benfica straight win. And the final game, Manchester City going up against Sevilla. Haaland's not there, but this team is still going to score goals. I've gone with the City straight win. Those odds, 3.43. With just 300 bucks, it turns into a magical 1,000 rands. And those are my picks for this week. That is Bet of the Week, sponsored by Betway. Remember to practice responsible betting at betway.co.za. Until the next one, all the best. We've come to the end of the show. Flew by so quickly. Before I go, I want to send a shout out to South Africa under 23. The boys, they did well. They threw to the next round of the qualifiers for AFCON. They're edging closer to that AFCON and a potential place at the Paris Olympics. And as for you that's watching, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified for future episodes.